Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. You know, I'm going to walk around a little bit and answer some of the questions that have been coming in because so many of them are really duplicate questions and I go through them and try to answer them all. Really great questions. Some of you have asked me about wood ash. Can I put wood ash in my totes or my raised beds? Yes, you can. If Let's say you're talking about your wood ash coming out of your fireplace. Now, if you're burning wood, just regular wood from trees, then most certainly you can collect that. Gary does sometimes. Well, we haven't done a lot of fireplace stuff this year. It's been quite warm. But when he's got the fireplace going, he does collect it. And he kind of throws it around. You wouldn't want to load it up in one spot. It's very rich. It's got a lot of minerals in there. And he does put it around his plants. And I toss some in my totes if I've got it. I don't always do it. He seems to grab it and throw it in his garden. Maybe that's why it looks so nice. But the point I wanted to make here is why I say maybe. If you're buying one of those fancy logs from the grocery store, you know, that you can just put in there light and it will burn for five hours. No, I would say not those. Those are not real wood. It's, it's a chemical. There's too many other products in there that may not be good for your plants because it isn't really a log. It's not a tree. It's got chemicals in there so the log will burn in your fireplace and give off color and some of them even have smells and different things. That's not real wood. I wouldn't take a chance. It might be fine but I personally wouldn't take a chance on that. But if you've got a fireplace and you're burning wood or you got a barbecue and you're using wood, yes, you can collect that. Keep it in a bucket with a lid so it stays nice and dry and then take a shovel or a cup and kind of just spread it around because you don't need a lot of it. So yes, wood ash is excellent. Think of fires. When a fire goes through and it burns in a forest or areas, hill, hillsides, and then later on all these plants grow, all these seeds start growing, the wood ash really does add to the soil. So it's an absolute yes as long it is coming from a tree. It doesn't matter what tree, it doesn't matter if it's walnut, whatever tree you're growing. The main thing is you want it from a tree, not one of those synthetic logs. Some of you have asked me about putting animal poop in your totes or in your raised beds. You know, like horse or llama or alpaca. If you can get that, if you've got neighbors and friends that have horses or donkeys or any, absolutely you can use it. You can put it in, in the middle, like you're layering. I put my, I like putting a lot of branches on the bottom, but if you're not doing it in a tote, you're doing it in the ground, yes. I will tell you with alpaca and llama, Poop. That really breaks down. It's like marbles very oddly. They'll, they seem to last. It's a very slow breakdown on that. I've actually seen that still a year and a half later still in balls. So it's good because it's kind of a slow re release. And I've heard on llama and alpaca that you don't even have to wait. It won't burn your plants, but it doesn't break down that well. So I just don't like the looks of it. I haven't gotten it lately, but I have used it about a couple years ago. And I would put that more in the middle and mix it in with your kitchen scraps as you're doing that and then cover it. It will break down much better. If it's too close to the surface, it doesn't break down. With horse or donkey or even cows, you want to make sure that's a little bit more broken down because that can burn your plants. That's not natural. That's not like using leaves like I use and then plant right away. Some of the, the horse poop, that manure can burn plants. So you may want to put that aside for a while, let it break down for quite a few weeks, maybe Maybe throw some leaves in there and then put it towards the middle, not too close to your plants towards the top. It can burn. But if it's been sitting around for a while, you can use it. It will be fine. If you're going to put it towards the bottom of the tote, it will be fine. But don't overload it. But yes, absolutely. If you can get it, it is very good. And with all this being said, I will say that you can many times grow squash like pumpkins and zucchini actually in pretty fresh horse manure right off the bat. I've seen it done. I've actually done it in the past with donkey and horse manure. Neighbor gave it to me once, just dumped it, planted the plants and they grew in it. So as it was breaking down, the squash was growing. It's always good to let it sit aside a little bit and break down. Hopefully they're feeding a good diet. You don't want anything that's got too many chemicals, but I don't think people would be feeding their pets chemicals, would they? Some of you have asked me what you can grow in totes. And I've gone over this over and over, so we'll just touch on this quickly. You can absolutely grow tomato plants, 
zucchini, eggplant, pretty much anything you can grow in the ground, you can grow in a tote. I'm actually growing asparagus. Now that really is supposed to be in the ground, but so far it's doing okay. But most of your plants, that your vegetable plants, they're not a plant that's gonna last for years and years. They're a plant that are very seasonal. Those absolutely can go into a tote. Now keep in mind, your tomato plants can last for years. And if they're happy and you're refreshing it and adding in some leaves and stuff for the microbes and for your earthworms, and then you can grow a tomato plant for years in a tote. Some of the other plants, like I said, asparagus do better in the ground, but I'm doing it. So you could grow anything in a tote. Keep in mind, if you overcrowd it, that's where you end up with a problem. That means if you've got 10 tomato plants growing, you're going to have a whole lot less going on. So you want to have maybe one or two tomato plants, maybe some lettuce, maybe a small herb, maybe layer it with pots in there. And let's say the herbs, or walking onions have their own pot, but they're sitting inside. It works fantastic. You, you'll see the rest of my videos. It is, you know, go check them out. It is fantastic. Now I've been getting multiple questions on holes. Where should I put my holes? How high should I put my holes? Here's the thing. Everybody has it differently, you know, a microclimate. You've got to go by your weather conditions. Now here we live in Southern California and we're quite warm. We've been 90 in the winter. That's not really normal, but we're 90 in the winter right now. Now in the summer, we're quite warm. We may have cooler nights, but we are quite warm. I like to retain water, so I keep my holes one to two inches up from the bottom. If they're on a chair, let's talk about a chair first. One to two inches up, so when I go through and water it, it leaves a small layer of water. I don't have to water my totes every day, maybe depending on the weather, every two or three days. If it's raining or cool, I could get away with even almost a week because there's always that little bit of water on the bottom and the plants as they grow will go down and reach and pull it up. I don't let my totes completely dry out because if you've got earthworms and microbes in there, they need that dampness. But I like having my holes up. Now, if you're living in a place like Oregon and you're getting tons of rain, then you want your holes as far down as you can put it for your garden. And the reason I say that is if you're growing in totes to keep, let's say, tree roots out, then you want to still have them up maybe a quarter of an inch up. As long as the tree roots can't get in there, you could just have it a little bit up. If you're not dealing with tree roots and everything is good, you can put them on the bottom if you want or as close to the bottom as you want. I keep mine up because I'm dealing with tree roots and I'm dealing with a drought. So you have to think of your conditions because everybody is different. You don't want to have it waterlogged if you've got rain every day and your holes are up, then it's just going to get wet. It's going to get too soggy. And even your microbes and your earthworms won't like that. So think about your weather conditions, you know, your regular weather conditions, not the different ones that suddenly show up. And then the, uh, let's end it with this one right now. This is a good Q&A. Um, some people have asked me about eggs. Can you compost eggs, raw, hard boiled, cook that you didn't eat? You can compost anything that was food. Yes, you can compost eggs and the shells. The shells break down so slowly. That's why sometimes you'll find some shells in there and that's perfectly fine. It's slowly releasing calcium. But eggs, the whole egg, don't worry about the membrane. Don't worry about anything. It will all break down beautiful. If you saw the last few videos of my chair garden, you saw that those totes were packed. They were literally packed with branches and little pieces of like logs in there, you know, like big branches off of trees, kitchen scraps with everything that I throw from the kitchen, banana peels, onion peels. I had collard leaves and kale. I mean, everything goes in there. Leaves around the property, it will all break down. Anything that was once alive will break down. You throw styrofoam in there, it's gonna look like styrofoam in three years. You put plastic in there, it's gonna look the same. But anything that was food matter, anything that was once alive, that will all decay. That will all break down. Oranges, you've asked, can you put oranges in there? Citrus, yes, but I wouldn't overload citrus. If you're a big orange eater, peels from let's say 20 oranges a week in there, it might be a little bit too much acid. So I wouldn't put too much, but if you're eating an orange and you got peels, go ahead and toss them in. You just don't want to overdo acid, that's all. But that is just all perfectly fine. I think we've gone over enough for today and please ask your questions and I'll pick questions. And there's so many questions that are duplicates, so it really works out 
about perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A today. And boy, I can't wait to start growing. And we're going to be all growing tons of stuff. It's so much fun. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.